Hi everybody, Molly Gemmel here. I want to tell you a little bit about this video that you're going to see. Um, this is the result of a conversation that I had with Jen Earl a couple months ago. We were talking about how we were going to be celebrating the 45th uh, birthday of NABO at the National Conference this year. And as you know, the National Conference is now going to be virtual because of the COVID uh, pandemic, but we're still celebrating our 45th birthday, but we're doing it in June instead of September. Um, so anyway, we had the idea to reach out to all of the past national presidents and chairs, women who have served this organization um, over the last 45 years, so the 45 past national presidents, and get them all together and ask them what their favorite memory from their time as president of the organization was. So I did that. I took that on as a project and reached out to all of the past national presidents who are still alive. And we got on Zoom together, uh, sometimes just one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes in big groups, and had a great time reminiscing and put together this video of every single one of them, uh, just about sharing their favorite memories. So my favorite memory, um, God, there were so many. I so, so loved, going around to different chapters, meeting the members, swearing in your boards. Um, but I'd have to say my favorite memory was the conference. It's the year that I was um, national chair in Spokane, Washington. Liz Gilbert was our keynote speaker and she is such an amazing person. And I just um, really, really loved hearing her speak and then getting to meet her in person, getting to chat with her. And it was just a highlight that I will never forget. So, um, of all the great things that happened during my chair year, uh, that was the standout. So I will let you watch everybody else's and I hope you enjoy it. I'll talk to you soon. I would have to say I have so many amazing memories from my years president. Um, most of them revolve around chapter visits and events. I was, I was so blessed because I was able to spend most of my time as president traveling around the country and visiting with all the the chapters and chapter leaders, but so there, I couldn't pick just one. So I'll start with, with the LA chapters annual luncheon, which was a huge event. And I wasn't, I, I was not only able to hang out with the chapter members, but I was able to hang out with Kathy Lee Crosby and Kathy Ireland. And I still have my picture. Oh, wow. So <laughs> this was one of the really memorable events for me. And, and I, you know, I treasure that photo. It's still up in my office. But the second was being hosted by the Louisville, Kentucky chapter. It included a whirlwind tour. I mean, they absolutely wore me out between radio shows, local TV, newspapers, meetings with legislative leaders, and it was capped off with being commissioned as a Kentucky colonel signed by the governor. And I still have that up in my New Jersey office. That was so much fun and so energizing to me as a leader, serving as president of an organization filled with such incredibly bright and dynamic women was an honor. It was an opportunity to make friends all over the country and the world and it helped me grow in ways that I never would have imagined. Thank you, Nabo. Nabo, congratulations on 45 years. I'm so happy to be part of this presentation to celebrate our history and our strength. I spent 10 years on the national board from 86 to 95 and uh, is delightful. It was just a delightful experience, a really growth experience for me. I remember before I actually committed to being on the board, Mary Del Brady suggested I talk with Susan Hager. And Susan Hager told me in a very sincere manner, it would only be three to five hours a week. All right, we all know that is absolutely not true. But I would say the events that I was touched by, the experiences and the exposures I had were phenomenal. Whether it was with Project 2000, HR 5050, when we were able to put NABO into the Women's Hall of Fame. Uh, during my leadership, we were able to form and uh, construct the current mission and help to change the governance of the board. All of those were growth and um, real true experiences. But when I think of NABO, I think of my mentors. I think of the value they added to my life personally. 
whether it was Sharon Poindexter's values that she showed or Jillian Rudd's magic, whether it was Virginia Littlejohn's vision, always pushing us to the next level, or Mary Dell's profound personal friendship. What I learned from Janet Harris Lang, from Patty DeDominic and Margaret Smith was their values and their stride in terms of how they formed and developed their businesses. Um, I could go on forever, but I realize we only have a short bit of time. I would just wanna say thank you to all of my Nabo sisters for what you have done in the past and what you continue to do to promote women business ownership in the country. Thank you, and let's celebrate in June and for years Just visiting to come. the different cities. It was always fun to go to the different cities all around the country, you know, and my partner would always meet me there. And so we'd do a little sightseeing while I was in town, which is, it was great fun. And it was fun to see the people that I knew, you know, time after time. And I've met some really good friends that I've kept since then. And that's what, 30 years ago or something? I don't know. So yeah. I'm Darla Beggs. I was chair uh, 2014 to 2015. Um, it was a wonderful year. It was um, very much, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't go first. It was very much a um, amazing experience for me. I got to follow behind a beautiful woman, Billy. I got the beautiful crystal to follow me. So I had a sandwich group of wonderful ladies that were so wonderful and supportive. Um, I think my best favorite memory for Nabo that year would just be all the team building and putting together that we did. Uh, Jen had just come in as our new CEO and she was really working hard to get her team together and we're all working hard together. And it was, um, it was lovely. It was a great, great group. Uh, you were on my, my board, Molly, the first year. So it was wonderful. I had met you previously, but didn't ever have a chance to know you until then. And so that was wonderful. So the, I think the thing that I remember most is just the camaraderie and the building and putting things in place to move forward. So my most memorable part of being the president of Nalbo National in 2013 and 14 was uh, traveling all over the country, visiting the chapters and particularly to Albuquerque. And the folks there were awesome. And, and I, I got to meet some of the chamber members in, in that city and town that supported that chapter. And also the other one with Ann Friedman in um, Miami and where they had the Mexican de delegation that came in. Um, and so, and also as many of you remember, we were in transition with our CEO and it was fun working with Jen and supporting her and trying to get her a mentor to, you know, be comfortable taking and supporting her in the, in the new position that she took. I think the, that, that year or the following year, I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, just meeting the great people in Nabo and the chapters and traveling across the country and and getting the uh, feeling, the energy and synergy with all those chapters was inspiring to me. So I think that was the best part was the traveling. Gail Watson, and I was the uh, chair in 2005 and six. And um, what I remember about that, that time was it was a, it was, I was exhausted. Uh, and actually it was the culmination of three years. So this goes back to Suzanne and, and Beverly, and I'm sure they'll talk about it a little bit as well. But um, it was during my year that we actually had culminated the work of three years, basically of changing our, our governance and uh, for NABO. And that was, a, uh, you know, it was, it was an incredible uh, process because um, it involved so many people and it was amazing. And, you know, not only did we have to envision a, the future of an organization and how, what it needed to be to deliver that member experience of the future and to have a more nimble and um, responsive board and one that, that looked uh, toward uh, st strategy and stewardship uh, rather than the day-to-day -day implementation of things. And so it was a big change and it involved a lot of discussion. And um, what I remember is that, you know, we, we, act, we passed the uh, bylaws. We first had to kind of pass the conceptual work and then we, and then we were able to pass the bylaws and um, and that was awesome. Um, just really quick, there was one other thing that happened that year, Hurricane Katrina, uh, Katrina 
And so those of you that have had sort of these crisis moments in your, in your leadership, um, that was, that was also an awesome experience because we established in a, re, a relief fund and brought together all the women's business organizations and, um, and actually really he- tangibly helped women business owners during that time. Um, great experience. And, and it couldn't have been done without the uh, teamwork of the leaders and the many members. Oh, you know, when I was thinking about, you know, memorable moments, you think about, okay, what, what was accomplished, whatever. And I kept thinking of something and then I'd say, no, that wasn't my year. That was Barbara's year. Or no, that wasn't my year. That was Beverly's year. But no. And what it was, was it really, what I remember is that it wasn't anybody's year. It really was a continuum. You know, what's some of the things that finished in my year really weren't projects that I started. It was somebody that was uh, president years before me. And some of the things that I may have started uh, culminated later on. And, you know, some of those things you said, well, they weren't real. They they didn't end up the way you thought they were going to end up, but they happened. And they happened because it wasn't any one person's responsibility. I think each of us has not so much an agenda, but maybe a passion around one thing. And my passion really was making sure that the chapters and the members felt like they were connected to NABO. And a lot of them hadn't been at that time. So I visited over 30 chapters during that year. Uh, So I did a lot of traveling. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think I really had traveled that much by myself before that. It was always family. And so whether it was boardsmanship or traveling or speaking, I always felt like, was I ready for it? And the answer is no. Uh, And I think that's one of the neat things about NABO is that we're never ready for it, but we're given jobs that stretch us and we're giving the support that we need. And so, you know, it's just continued and, and, and all these people that I see, uh, you know, as past chairs and board members and the presidents are just so important because it's a team effort. So I'm Crystal Arredondo. My um, board year was right after Darla, so it'd be 2015-16. Uh, it's a huge honor just to be in this club with all of these ladies. Huge, huge honor to be like just part of this history. I remember thinking that. Um, I remember being the first person who was under 40 to ever be a board chair. And that was huge. I couldn't, that was, you know, it was huge. And to have people come up to me whenever I was at the conference and being younger and relating to that and actually giving me compliments about that, I was just, I don't know, I just continue to be amazed um, at what the organization has done and how it's evolved. And I just remember my big highlight um, was that I, I had the best board. I had one of the best boards ever. And it was a dream team. I called it a dream team. I knew I was part of a dream team at that time. I mean, it's just, there was magic. We, there were no egos. Everybody got along. We had a five-year plan that we executed and it was rolling. And I just remember we got so much done, but our vision um, that just kept pushing us was that we wanted, there was such a huge disconnect I think between national and all of the chapters at that time. And that was our big mission that we were trying to bridge that gap and bring a face and a personality um, back to NABO National and bring that, bring the whole family back together. And um, it, it took, you know, it took a team to do that. But I think if you look at national now, I mean, people are, I mean, people just, everybody wants to be on the board now. Everybody wants to be a part of it now, you know? I mean, it has such a different culture, I think. Um, And I'm just, I'm proud to see where it's gotten, proud to be a part of it. And so that was my highlight. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's what I always said, what I'll always say about you guys. I'm Jeanette Armbrust. I'm the current NABO National Chair. I've had the honor of serving this year. And I, you know, before I get to my memory, I think what I have really enjoyed seeing, I mean, obviously, ladies watching this, we're in the middle of a major COVID crisis. So I think what I'm going to look back on this year is really seeing NABO Nation stepping up and supporting each other, 
helping each other, coming together to support our Navajo sisters across the globe um, in the health and wellness of not only ourselves, but our businesses. And so that is something that I'm gonna look back on and always be really proud to have led this organization, um, not because of anything that we've done from the leadership team, but because this organization has shown me again through this crisis why I am so proud to, to step up and serve. So with that, my, my, probably my highlight, because I don't really think of COVID time as a highlight, but what I have enjoyed is traveling around before we were all in the travel ban and just visiting all the different chapters, seeing all the ladies across the country. Obviously, the culmination of the WBC in Jacksonville will always be a highlight for me of you know just standing up there with um, and seeing everybody out in the crowd and of course naming and branding this organization as Nabo Nation which is so near and dear to my heart so thank you for the opportunity to serve and let's continue to support and grow. I was president 0405. It was a transitional time uh, so I had one foot in what we used to be and I, I was the chair of the department to rewrite uh, the bylaws of what we would become. So Crystal, when I hear that you were the first uh, chair under 40, that was one of my goals. Uh, I remember standing up uh, on the day uh, that we used to have you know, a big celebration. And I looked out the audience and I said two things. I said, I see too many women who look like me, meaning age and race, um, and we need to change that. So I'm so excited um, that younger uh, women are stepping in and becoming, uh, you know, incredibly involved. I love the people uh, around me. The, I was so fortunate. There was this nice little sweet spot um, between Suzanne, who's on here, and Gail, who's on here. Uh, I was saddled between them, and we just got along great. We had fun. We did things. Um, that was really, really special. Um, but like, um, was it Jeanette said, my favorite thing was going out to the chapters. And at that time, we had 88 chapters, I think. Uh, I, I hit most of them between the year before I became president and then president. Um, and we also started bringing in international members. Uh, and that was really cool. And then the year that Gail was president, I took off internationally and just had an amazing ride of getting to not only know business owners, but to work in some third world countries, uh, helping them start businesses. So NABO propelled me into that just blessed gift of being able to give back. I was trying to think about my, um, my first memory of NABO itself was Coming to Washington with a, a colleague in Minnesota, Susan Sands, uh, we were young entrepreneurs, three years in business at that point, and we came out because we read an article in the paper about the National Association of Women Business Owners doing something on Capitol Hill. That must have been 73 or 74. And we came out here, we met Susan Hager and Donna O'Bannon and Denise Cavanaugh and uh, trying to I'll think of the others as I go along, I guess. At any rate, we were very excited and wanted to participate. And so we said, we want to be, we want to create a chapter in Minnesota. And I'll never forget, Donna said, well, we don't have chapters. We're, and I said, well, you have to have chapters because we can't be in the Washington, but we, we want to be, we want to affiliate. And they said, well, we don't have, there's no provision in the bylaws. And I said, well, that takes a change in the bylaws. So, so they decided that, okay, they could change the bylaws, and that's how Minnesota became the first um, chapter of the, of the association, and it's still going on, and um, it was very exciting. And um, <clears throat> so very soon, I joined the national board, first as treasurer and ultimately as president. And I think it was, you know, it was very tough times. We, we had, you know, we were all babies in business. I mean, we, all of us were recruiting some of the more experienced women in our communities to be supportive, but they were past the point of being interested in organizing. It was those of us young in business. So creating an organization which required a lot of effort, as many of you have experienced, 
takes a lot of time away from the business, which is your primary focus during the day. And um, so those early years were financially um, stressful for the association. And I was, during the time I was president, we moved the management of the association to the Phyllis Hager group in, in um, Chicago. And um, I reconnected with Phyllis's partner, Ann Bryant, when I got back to Washington years later, because Ann was, first she came out here, she left the consulting practice to be the head of Association of University Women, and then ran the Association of School Boards. So I still stay in touch with Ann, Ann Bryant a lot. So it was a very exciting time, and the association was entrepreneurial as well as we were very entrepreneurial because we were building businesses in most cases. I think most of the, most of the um, leadership of NABO at that time were building businesses that were less than five years old. And um, many of them are still going on. So many of them are not, of course, mine is not. And um, I left my business to, to um, run for political office and, um, so, you know, life, things change and, and um, but it was a very exciting time and I have only good, good memories. I remember some of the tougher times, but overall it's a very, very good memory. To have an opportunity to see each and every one of you. Um, in 1986, Virginia Little John came to Oklahoma City to see if Oklahoma would develop a chapter. I was in attendance at that meeting. And I was, um, I was really grateful for Virginia's uh, ability to form the NABO group and, and really take it nationally as she was outgoing um, all around the United States. I joined immediately and became a member in 1986 in 1988, I became vice president, national vice president. And um, no, I take that back. 1988, I was uh, vice president of appointments for the White House, trying to get more NABA women and women in general um, in the White House, for appointments in the White House. In 1989, I was national vice president. In 1990, I was president. I would not recommend that to anyone because it was just too much of a fast uptake. Um, my goal as president in 1990 was to develop a strong voice for NABO members inside Washington, D.C. and the Capitol. So I, my goal was to take the headquarters of NABO out of Chicago and move it to Washington, D.C. So we could prove that women entrepreneurs had a voice in the political system. Um, we were able to do that during my year, and we testified before Congress many, many times in 1990 and throughout the entire year. So, I mean, we've, we have, we showed and we proved that women business owners were exploding across the country exponentially, and that we knew what kind of, of resources we needed uh, to continue to grow our businesses. The 1986 White House Conference on Small Business, as Virginia Little John uh, talked about when she was here in Oklahoma for us to start our chapter, was really an incredible experience. I ran as a delegate, she taught us how to do that, and um, I remember August the 16th, 1986, I landed in Washington, D.C. for the very first time in my life. Um, in 1995, uh, four years after uh, my term as president, I was very much still involved in NABO and traveling all around the United States to every chapter I could. I think I went to 25 or 26 chapters um, educating NABO members on how they could run and be elected as a delegate to the 1995 White House Conference on Small Business. Um, we had an incredible force during that 95 White House Conference. In fact, I believe that almost 
all 100 issues were NABO generated. The top 10 issues were absolutely NABO's issues. And I went back, finally took a, a minute this morning and just looked at what were the top 10 issues? And they were capital formation, community development, environmental policy, human capital, uh, international trade. Yes, we were going into international trade at that time. Um, Main Street, procurement, regulations and paperwork, technology and um, information revolution, and taxation. So those were the key top 10 issues that NABO had, and they became the 1995 White House Conference on Small Business and their total issues. We worked on those for many, many years after 1995, and I'm just very proud to be able to say that I was a national president for the National Association of Women Business Owners, and I'm now running for Congress. And that would not be happening in any way, shape, or form had I not had the experience of being involved in the National Association of Women Business Owners. All right, it's wonderful to see you all and to be reconnected. And thank you, Molly, for your efforts in doing that. Um, I think that we all have extraordinary member, memories of uh, NAVO at one time or another, whether it was our in just being the chapter president. I mean, another woman and I, Barbara Perry, started the Palm Beach chapter. And we used to go to the Miami chapter meetings until we said that's a long drive for us. It was about 60 miles. So we ended up starting our own chapter and then thought, you know, that it would be really fun to serve on the national board. So then our aspirations were, okay, let's participate at that level. And I was fortunate enough to become VP International for two years. And that experience was wonderful because not only did our leaderships get honed, but we were able to take women and, and help them learn about international trade. I took them on a trade mission to Central America. And you know, just the experiences that we were able to share with them and help them grow was phenomenal. My year was an interesting year because we had the challenge of changing the board structure. And so it used to be every chapter had a member on the board and then we had the executive committee and we had what 70 some people on the board and it was impossible to get anything accomplished. So with the um, wonderful help of Terry Neese, who was my past president, and Grace McGarland, who was the president-elect, and an incredible team of leaders that we had on, on the executive committee at that time, we were able to make that happen. And it was probably the board meeting from hell, but it certainly worked out to be the best thing. And, and we, you know, of course, the structures changed over the years, but at this point, it is really, really, um, you know, you look back and you say that really was necessary. And thank God everyone worked as a team to make that happen. So I think, you know, the, also, as Terry said, getting into the, the political arena was not anything that I was certainly going to try out for, but I was very interested in representing entrepreneurs in Washington. So when we had the White House conference, I was fortunate enough to become co-chair of the Florida delegation and really support our members going to Washington and making all these things happen. And as Terry said, we had a phenomenal agenda there and we were just marvelous at how we you know, crafted it into everyone's idea as well. And it became that the entire delegation from every state was pushing our agenda. So it was phenomenal, really so. And, um, you know, and the wonderful experience of just being with other women entrepreneurs, strong leaders, strong, uh, bright, bright, intelligent women was, I think, an incredible experience for me. And, and it was for everybody who sat on our board, everybody who, um, became a member and really saw that and if they take advantage of it, you know, we said this every year, if you take advantage of what's offered, it can make you so much stronger and a, a much better entrepreneur, a much better community member, a much better leader, and, you know, so many different ways that it can strengthen you. So I think that, you know, I support everyone who has the same philosophy as I that the novel really made a huge difference in our life. My earliest memories of going to a Novo National Board meeting, I, I was in tow by my Los Angeles mentor who's passed away, uh, that was Virginia McBride, and uh, Lourdes Miranda was the chairwoman, and it was so impressive. Lourdes, remember, you had big, big boardrooms, and we had such a large board, and Sharon Poindexter was on the board, and it was extraordinary. Early on, I joined the foundation board because that's what Sharon wanted to head up. And we were 
activating outreach and doing more chapters. And then I went off the board for a few years when Virginia became president, Virginia Littlejohn, but eventually came back on in the 90s. So in 94, 95, I was national president. So many fabulous memories. Of course, the White House Conference on Small Business and all of you who were with the organization at the time played an important part of that, especially Virginia Littlejohn. Um, the United Nations Conference on Women in Beijing also was held that same year. That was exciting. Uh, in my year as president, we did, uh, we upgraded all the national corporate partners. We got B of A and AT&T and um, Wells Fargo to all compete with each other. And that's when we announced the $1 billion loan fund with Wells Fargo Bank. And then, and then Bank of America decided they want to beat them. And then they uh, announced a $10 billion loan fund for women business owners. That was really exciting. We started Enterprising Women Magazine with Judy Freeman. That was exciting. We got IBM as our major corporate sponsor and they helped underwrite that for the first two years. Um, we started the first national uh, certification program for women business owners, which Janet Harris Lang eventually ran and helped grow. There were so many great things that happened. Uh, the friendships, the mentoring, uh, all of these things are things that I remember. And um, the deep, deep friendship. Nabo changed me. Nabo made me so much better of a businesswoman than I was. I was a young uh, girl, 28 years old when I started my business and just uh, uh, probably 30 when I joined Nabo. And it's been a part of my life for 40 years. It's extraordinary. What a great network. And anybody who has the opportunity to get involved, to serve in leadership or to um, do a special project, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity. As I, as I used to always tease uh, Barbara Kassoff and Barbara Stanbridge, it's filled with awesome NABO success stories. Remember that, Barbara? My name is Suzanne Taylor, and I had the great pleasure of serving as NABO's national president from 1996 to 1997. Our theme was partnering for profits and prosperity. Following that theme, our board gave a more prominent role to WBOC, the Women Business Owners uh, Corporation, which certified WBOs and the National Foundation for Women Business Owners, our research arm. Nobel's affiliation with FSAAM, an international body of women business owners throughout the world, which met annually to hold World Congress meetings, gave me the privilege to travel and represent Nobel to Congress meetings in Canada, South Africa, Portugal, Italy, and to speak at the OECD conference in Paris, France. Nabo also hosted a World Congress in Los Angeles while I was president-elect. As my year as president came to an end, I described our journey as a board, as individuals and a team, performing like a fine symphony. Thank you. Hey, uh, my pleasure to serve on the board uh, with many of these women who have gone before me uh, because I was a vice president of member services for two terms. And so that was four years I was on the board before I became a president-elect. And a lot of my happiest memories really were under their leadership and um, the things that we accomplished in member services. My most fun memory was when the chapter presidents all paraded into the conference, the uh, convention uh, room hall, to the tune of uh, the circle of life. So it was just like one of those breathtaking moments when you have, uh, at that point we had 80 some chapters and so all these chapter presidents are parading into the uh, conference hall to the, um, to the cycle of life. And it was, it was um, there were a lot of tears shed. It was, it was quite wonderful. And it was also at that time that we instituted the Healthy Chapter Award which really allowed chapters to do a self audit according to best practices and uh, standardized criteria that really uh, upped the chapter's game quite a bit. So I felt, um, I felt well prepared coming into the uh, president-elect and president's uh, role and uh, was really looking forward to just moving the organization to great, great things. And a moment 
came upon us at our first board meeting when we discovered now, when I think back on this, I think, where were we that we just discovered it then? But we discovered that we were in a real financial crisis. And our treasurer, who was a very, very, very competent CPA, who was brand new on the board, was really scared. I mean, she was scared of what we were facing. She was scared of what it might mean for her professionally to be on this, on this board at this time. And so um, I would say a tremor ran through the board at the first meeting. And that board is really my happiest, uh, proudest moments in terms of novel. Because our theme was Together We Can. And at the end of the year, together we did. We uh, turned the organization around. We created a different model in terms of how we would uh, spend our money so that we went to a um, management firm instead of having staff at the office. We changed our spending habits. Uh, we, scaled, uh, we scaled down to a more... Um, uh, to a more of a growth model rather than we have arrived model. And, um, and the thing about it was it was the board, but it was also the chapter presidents. So I had many meetings, well, at least three meetings, national meetings with the chapter presidents to really tell them where we were at and how they could contribute to making a difference. And they really stepped up. There had always been, in my uh, experience on the board, uh, was there, there was always a lot of tension between the chapters and the national board in terms of uh, financial contribution and where the power is. And the chapter presidents were really our partners in that turnaround adventure. And so at the end of the year, when we gave our annual report to those chapter presidents, it was really like high fives all around. And I, I really um, attribute that to the board that was the most diverse board that Nabo had ever had at that point in terms of racially and ethnically. It was, it was really, it was a great board and together we did. Uh, I'm Sandra Adams and um, I have a lot of wonderful memories of Nabo. But before I talk about uh, the year that I was president, I wanna talk about the fact that when I first went to Nabo, a Nabo meeting in Miami, the Miami chapter, um, I gained mentors that helped me learn how to be an entrepreneur, how to grow my business. I had mentors um, that had recently come back from uh, the White House Conference on Small Business, and it was just permeating uh, the entire year um, after that, first, that, that White House Conference. And uh, my cousin, Wanda Hernandez, was instrumental. Barbara Raskin, just a lot of people locally that um, probably known to some of you and some people that were, because uh, they were also served on national boards. But that was eye-opening for me because there had been no entrepreneurs in my family and I really had no idea what I was doing. I ended up becoming chapter president in Miami and that was the year of Hurricane Andrew. And when Hurricane Andrew came, we didn't have technology like we have now. And I remember getting in my car and going and finding all of the NABO members that I could find that belonged to the chapter, figuring out what we could do for them. And the entire country came to our aid. My office ended up with all kinds of office supplies and furniture and things that came from other chapters. And I used my office as a warehouse because I was on the north part of Miami and not down in the south where it was uh, where it happened so bad. And I spent a lot of time working on the rebuilding of Miami on that, on uh, committees that we had, uh, Economic Development Council and and those types of boards in getting Miami back on its feet and the Miami the women entrepreneurs in the Miami area back on their feet. And that propelled me to a national, kind of a national presence. 
And because my business is technology, I kind of became the technology <laughs> person that nobody wanted to listen to. I remember giving um, many presentations at the chapter level and at the national level. And I will never forget the day that I was talking about technology and I was talking about email and a woman in the back of the room raised her hand at the end and she says, why in the world would anybody ever want to use email? And I was devastated. I thought I didn't get the message across. I didn't do it right. I didn't let give them the information they needed to make smarter decisions. And I was heartbroken. And um, it was then that I realized that I had mentors nationally as well. And um, many of the women that came before me encouraged me and told me, don't give up, don't quit, don't, don't, don't get discouraged because it was very, very difficult that women did not want to embrace the technology. I can run my business without it. Um, well, along came my year as president and Barbara Stanbridge did a fantastic job. And um, as president, I was preparing for my first trip to a chapter in September 2001. And that changed the whole dynamic of our year because now our New York chapter and Washington and that area were all affected. Everybody in the country was affected, but they were affected directly. So it ended up that my most vivid recollections were going to the chapters. And if I went to a chapter in Memphis, they wanted to know how the New York people were, were doing. If I went to the Palm Beach or the Broward chapter, they wanted to know how the folks were doing in New York and in Washington. So that became a year of really concentrating on those chapters and helping them heal and helping them get back on their feet. And I just felt that my year for Hurricane Andrew was what prepared me to help me work with encouragement to each of those areas that needed it. But it was uh, for all of us, I think, a memorable and devastating and devastating year. So I uh, finished out my year and uh, just took a deep breath and said, I, I don't, I just, I just want to help people. That's all. And I found myself doing more and more volunteer work as my business grew. And thankfully, my business did grow enough to allow me to do a lot of volunteer work. I love doing White House uh, uh, Women Business Owner Certifications, which was a little job. And Janet would call me and say, can you go do this one? Can you do, go do that one? And I loved doing those kinds of things. And I wanted to help other women. And I mentored other women in their businesses. So today I'm a happy retiree. Thanks a lot for putting this together and for sharing all of these, everybody's experiences. Thank you. Some of the words I've heard so far are so impressive and they embody all of my feelings about novel. So I can't tear up now, which is not good. <laughs> but this has been a wonderful experience for me. I have never uh, felt more challenged which is something that I love. I just would like to uh, recognize now both the 45 years of serving women and the business community. We got like the men members. I remember a man saying, you know, well, why can't we be members? Like, come on, you know, we welcome you. And in Chicago, we did have some members. So uh, I'll just go back to my beginning. In, uh, in the mid 90s, I used to go to two or three different, and now both times as a guest, because I had a good friend who's very active in Albert, Chicago. And then in 1997, I went to what's called the Achievement Luncheon, which is so five or six hundred guests, a lot of corporate, uh, oops, I lost my picture. <laughs> okay, well, I give up. I can't see myself anymore. I hope I'm still there. You're still there. Okay, good. Um, and I, I was so 
energized by this luncheon. I've never felt that kind of energy before. And so I joined NAVO at the luncheon. And what I loved the most was going to Chicago meetings because the energy was just contagious. And as Diane Valletta used to say, NAVO is my water cooler. And I understood that. I had a big water cooler in my office, so I had that also, but we didn't tend to hang around the water cooler. I think that's an old sacrifice. I may be women who don't do that. But uh, some of the things that I remember are I went 97 joining NAVO doing, and I joined six committees the first week. You're either going to kill yourself or you're going to run now. <laughs> and I went on to uh, chosen by women members of NAVO Chicago to run for the national board. And I did that in 2002 along with a wonderful bunch of other women. Here's what NAVO has done for me. NAVO has brought me sisters. I never had a sister. It's brought me friends, it's brought me mentors, it's brought me every opportunity that I ever wanted. All I had to do was take it. And I did take advantage of a lot of things. So in 2002, I went on the national board. And in 2004, I think I became two of member services. 2005, I became, you know, three, I became VP of member services. And four, I became VP of public policy. And five, I became president elect. And it's 2006, seven, I was president of NAVO. I continued on in NAVO National doing a lot of different things. I worked with Wendy on corporate partners. I went back and served on the Chicago, now the Chicago board for another year to make sure that I could bring back to them my experiences from National. I think that we find many ways to serve, but from what I got from this was um, the most exciting, the most long-term, these women are my friends and my sisters forever. And when I see your faces pop up today, I count almost all of you as someone I could call tomorrow and ask for a favor or ask for mentoring or whatever it is that I wanted, and it would be there for me. The first time I noticed there was a huge change in how we react to each other was I was on an airplane with another woman from Chicago that I barely knew, Lisa Johnson, and she and I started talking, and we're on the plane, and we're talking about how you fire somebody, what do you do about unemployment comp? How do you handle a, a, an employee who's not doing well? How do you fire an employee? How do you hire an employee? We talked the whole flight about business things. Never once did we discuss, have I cut my hair lately? Or, you know, other things that really go on normally in female conversation. I knew then that it was different, and I knew then that I would grow with it. I'll tell you that I was born in San Francisco many, many years ago. And a lot of the important things that have happened to me in life have happened in San Francisco, which I believe is strictly coincidental. I was only there two years and then took me away. But I was, uh, I turned 65 in San Francisco. I was inaugurated into my presidency in San Francisco. I did many, many things there on behalf of NALBO, including representing corporate partners there. And I just I feel that there was always some connection between me, my birthplace, and novel. And I made myself a few no notes on when other women were talking about the important things, but quite frankly, there aren't enough minutes to be able to cover all the things that I would like to talk about. I would just like to talk about the, the joy of serving leadership in novel. I went as president, I went and visited many chapters. They were all so exciting. I also went and dealt with some chapters that weren't doing as well, and we were able to turn them around. So the presidency brings so many opportunities to you. I can't even tell you how many laughs I had in Tucson and in Texas and in New York City and all over the country. These are the memories that bring you back to realize what we're doing. I also served with SAEM, which is another thing that's terrific for women to meet women from all over the world and the impressions that they had on me. So not only do I have sisters here in the United States, but I have sisters all over, pretty much all over the world. You can't get that kind of, of thing in life mostly. You just, uh, a lot of times you just kind of go when you're running a business to from one day of the business to the next day of the business. But I'll tell you, this has enriched me. It, it 
there's a lot of travel in my business, so I've been to a lot of places, but never been treated with royalty like I have been as a member of NAVO and FCEM. I, um, I will continue to go on with that, and I know that I can call on any of my NAVO sisters anytime I want to. I'd probably use up my time, but I also had opportunities to speak in the House and the Senate on behalf of women business owners. How often do you get to do that? Watching those timers put down as your seven minutes goes down to zero, and some, some chairs were kind enough to let me finish in some way, but uh, it doesn't matter. I think that we were very successful. We went on to become very successful as corporate partners. At the time I got there, there were corporate partners, but we increased those. We increased membership because that was my, my drive was to increase membership. I wanted all women to have the opportunity that I had. So I want to thank Nabo very much for giving this to me. There's no way that I could have accomplished the things that I did without Nabo's help, without my kitchen cabinet, without my, my board, who were always supportive of me. I really didn't have a lot of big issues. I had work, but everything that I did during the time I served Nabo, I served with pleasure and I got joy from it. I'd like to remind anyone who's thinking of going into leadership in NABO, take that gamble, take that chance, see where it leads you, see how much you can uh, enlarge your, your women friends, your sisters, your uh, mentors, your uh, people that you mentor, because those opportunities don't come around that often. And so if you're considering leadership, thank you very much. Um, first, but like everyone else, I want to say thank you for pulling this together. It's amazing. I am so excited just to see Evelyn and Wendy and and Kelly and before that Patty and of course Carol on the um, on the screen. Um, when I think about my uh, experience as a past president of NABO, I have to say that I feel like um, very much like having been a bridge. Uh, connecting Nabo's incredible history and past uh, to what's become a really substantial and um, exciting future. Um, my year as president and my three years in the leadership of the board as both um, uh, incoming and then ex the former president really felt like a year of tremendous transition and one that would not have been possible without the help and support of people like Carol, of Patty, and without the trust and confidence of Kelly and Wendy and Evelyn, all who succeeded me as president. Um, Nava was incredibly important to me as a business owner. I'm a lawyer, and uh, while, you know, lawyers are incredible professionals rarely are they good business people they don't think like business people and so becoming part of novel la put me in contact with and in sistership with women who thought about things that the folks that i dealt with every day didn't think about and confronted challenges that the people that i dealt with in my profession every day did not confront because of novel i was able to build a pretty substantial and important practice in um, California. And because of my uh, mentors and relationships in Los Angeles, I was able to spread my wings and find the kind of uh, inspiration um, and the purpose to want to participate with Novel at the national level. Like a number of past presidents, Using chapter and national was really important to me and important to the women with whom I served. Thinking about how to do things in new ways, uh, taking the reins of the organization, um, hiring a CEO, really thinking about how we led in a different way was a significant part of what we took on. And when I look at the organization today, I'm just proud, proud of the time that I spent both at the local level and at the national level, and incredibly impressed with everything that was achieved as I passed away. Um, 
I know we're supposed to keep this short, so I'm going to do my best to do that. But more than anything for me, novel, um, my, my most enduring memories and the thing that sustains me even now, although I don't spend much time engaged with a number of the women that made such a big impression on me, the thing that I take away was and is the connection and the strength that you get in those connections and the uh, power that comes from knowing other women and what they've achieved and taking that power with you and knowing that it helps you and, and continues to inspire you to achieve. And one last thing, not only did Novel impact me in a really, really, really profound way, but my daughter launched a business a couple of years ago. She's an uh, e-commerce uh, entrepreneur and she never uh, for one day thought about doing anything other than being her own boss. And that confidence and that aspiration for her was fueled by watching her mother uh, run a company and also engaging with those incredible women inside Novo. And even today, the thing that she talks about is wanting to become a Novo member and wanting to be successful and engaged in Novo. So um, not only did it impact me, but like we hope to always, uh, it you know continues to provide dividends for women generations ahead of us. Um, thank you. I'm actually supposed to be in another meeting. I've been going back and forth, but I really wanted to do this. Evelyn, Wendy, Carol, Kelly, I love you. Thank you, Molly, for doing this so much. Good. Well, it's great to see all of you uh, on the screen today. I. <clears throat> I really have missed all my Nabo friends. Um, Y'all look great too. All of you, well preserved in age. It's good. Um, you know, when I think about my first memory of Nabo, it was I attended uh, a national event called Public Policy Days in DC. And it was just amazing. Um, there were some experienced Nabo members who were. Uh, it brought us all into a room for training and they taught us about the issues. Well, they told us about the issues that they had as the top issues for the day. And then they taught us how to talk to our congressional representatives. And what they also did is kind of whipped everybody into a frenzy. I mean, everybody got excited. And then you came outside of the hotel and there were like three Greyhound buses lined up. And all these women that are all spun up now get on these buses and they go down to, to you know, Washington, to the Congress buildings. And you had appointments with uh, your representatives from your state or your area. And, um, and I remember the first year I did it, I was just watching everything in amazement. It was like crazy. I was like, wow, I, I, I never seen this before. And Ever since that first meeting, I, um, I, that was like always my favorite meeting, national meeting to attend with public policy days. And we got really good at it. I think people have talked about that before, about how we really would get educated about what issues were most impacting our members and bring those issues forward in a way that we were heard. And when you show up in, in numbers, like, you know, Three Greyhound buses full of, you know, spun up women, you get a lot of attention and people do listen to you. So I would encourage us to continue to do that. You know, I was thinking back on, and at that time, I would have never thought that I would eventually be a national president of NABO. And then, you know, that certainly happened and it was, it was a lot of fun. When I think back on that year, it was not different a lot different from what we are in today. You know, this was 2009, 2010, and there were a lot of small businesses that were being hurt by the, what they call the Great Recession. And now here we are in COVID-19 quarantine. We're all on this Zoom meeting from our homes, working remotely, except we probably do have a lot better technology today than what we had uh, back back in the day. But Again, the small businesses are being um, being impacted by not being able to work. Those especially that are in the industries where they have to be present. Um, you know, I I am still working uh, as an engineer, uh, but mainly managing people, not doing any design work these days. 
And fortunately, I've been able to continue working. I've considered an essential workforce. And, um, and so it hasn't had too much of an impact on me. And of course, those of you that know me know that I sold my business in 2008. So actually, when I was president of NABO, I have just, there was no longer a, business, a woman business owner. But I think I'll always be a woman business owner in my heart. Uh, you know, once you're an entrepreneur, you, I sometimes refer to myself as a recovering entrepreneur now. Um, but anyway, I, I, I do know what it's like to be there. I, I know all my friends that are still women business owners and I talk to them and they're, uh, some are doing well and some are having a harder time than others. Um, and I think we have to, again, make our voices heard so that everybody can, uh, can, get the relief that they need. Um, sometimes our government lays out plans and they sound like really good when they come up with these ideas, but when they get into practical applications, they maybe miss the mark somehow. And I think we need to give that kind of feedback. So uh, really enjoyed my years on the NABO board. Um, as as uh, Cynthia has said, she and me and Kelly and Evelyn, all in a row together was a lot of fun. It's great to see you guys today on the screen. Um, all my best to you. Thank you. Uh, I think NABO found me or I found NABO back in the late 90s and fell in love with it. I, it was a place where I really felt like I belonged and I think the, the real stamp that it was the, the organization that I needed to basically make a, a long-term lifetime commitment to was I would come home from those meetings in Kansas City, from the Kansas City chapter, and my daughters would go, you, they were very young at the time, young grade school, and they would say, you've been to a NABO meeting, haven't you? And I'd said, well, how did you know? Because you always come home in such a good mood after a NABO meeting. So that, that was a, a real uh, incentive, I guess, or that was a real stamp that it, it was the place for me, like I said. I was the NABO president in 2010, 2011, and from a legislative standpoint, some of the things that we were involved with were the Affordable Care Act, uh, and finally, the implementation of the Women's Procurement Program. And then uh, I also remember sitting in a green room with Karen Mills, the administrator of the Small Business Administration, before we went on stage at the national conference. And I remembered, presenting suggestions to her for SBA assistance for women business owners and wondering, you know, is she really listening here? And at the end of our conversation, as we were getting ready to walk up on stage, she handed me a card that had her cell phone number on it. She said, call me. I want to continue this conversation. So I thought, this is the power of NABO. Uh, so that, that made a real impact on me. But when I think back about that time, what stays with me most are the women of NABO. The women I served on the board with, again, many of you who are on the call, uh, uh, Cynthia McLean Hill, Evelyn Strange, Wendy Lopez, uh, Laura Yamanaka, you know, those women and the women business owners in our membership from all over the country, especially the uh, chapter presidents that I had a chance to get to know while I was on the board. And during my tenure, we were dealing with the Great Recession and everything that went along with that. So there were lots of hard decisions that we had to make. And in order to make those kinds of decisions, as a board, we had to have tough conversations with each other and ask each other hard questions about a whole lot of things. It wasn't just the recession we were dealing with. It was about leadership. It was about staffing, about finances. And the result of those kinds of candid, thoughtful, sometimes heated discussions was a bond that I feel to this day with those women. Uh, even though I don't always get to see you very often, they're still some of my strongest friends, strongest mentors, and I'll forever be grateful to the time that we had together. And it's always such a pleasure when I unexpectedly get to see you like this on this Zoom call uh, or in a, a meeting I didn't know you were going to be at. So, you know, it's just some of the best years were the years that I was on the board. I'm proud to have served with all of you and I'm humbled to be among really the 45 women who have led NABO, this great organization throughout the years. So thank you to all of you who've served in this role and who share the vision of making 
the world a better place for all women business owners. Happy 45th anniversary, NABO. I'm Evelyn Strange, and I was the NABO National Chair 2011-2012, following Kelly Scanlon. Um, it's just unbelievable the years I spent in leadership and then involved with NABO, as many women express. Uh, the women are incredible, intelligent, strong women, lead their businesses, and help pull this organization forward. Uh, I served in many positions at the national level, national treasurer, chair of the nominating committee, corporate partners. Um, and one time I think I took a break and I came back and I was chair of the uh, perhaps most coveted, the governance committee, or at least that was back then. I know many of you can relate to that. But um, I do want to say uh, so grateful for all my years spent in NABO and the friendships that I have procured through the years. And that time of 2011 uh, was very exciting for NABO because we were in pretty good shape. We were growing members. We were very involved in high profile advocacy for the women owned businesses. And our board that year, um, knew that these strong volunteer leaders had only so much time if we really wanted to take this organization forward and take advantage of opportunities we really needed a full-time dedicated president ceo and staff so it was during that year that we were able to bring on board a president and ceo and start the staff whose 100 percent of their focus was on the mission of NAVO. So we were very fortunate to be able to make that transition during that time. That was only because of what so many other women and boards had done to make this a strong organization. Here we are today, we have Jen Earl, our wonderful CEO, a tremendous staff who continue to build this organization in forward thinking venues that we didn't even imagine back in 2011. So all of that is due to the work of so many women uh, prior to this time on our board. I just want to say a big shout out to all the wonderful women I have served with over these years in NABO, Kelly, Cynthia, Wendy, Laura. I want to say thank you to all of those women that have been leading this organization since 1975 through today and in the years to come. As NABO celebrates its 45th anniversary, just want to say job well done and keep it going. I could add one data point. Uh, the first White House conference was 1980, not 1976. And there were a number of other national presidents. I mean, Donna's influence, as Marlene says, was enormous. Yeah. She was one of the most sophisticated female lobbyists in Washington, uh, astonishing at that period of time, incredibly high-level contacts, and she trained the organization. We were so lucky in those early years to have so many sophisticated political people who either had public relations companies, lobbying firms, they wrote speeches for cabinet ministers. Charlotte Taylor, who was never a past national president, but Charlotte was a major speechwriter for Juanita Krebs, the okay. Secretary of Commerce, and, and then Susan Hager with her public relations firm. So it was just astonishing the talent that this little tiny organization brought to the table and punched so much above its weight for all of those early years that really set us on the glide path to greatness. My favorite, I, there's a lot of favorite memories <laughs> from my time on national board. Um, I think my most um, favorite that's kind of carried on was uh, re-engaging the relationship with FCEM. Um, you know, we have been a part of FCM, NABO has for an extremely long time, um, even had a couple of people that were, you know, on the steering committee and vice presidents, you know, 20 years back, but we kind of lost that disconnection and it was just an invite. It was one of those, you never know, you just show up. So uh, Griselda had worked really hard over the years, keeping us connected with FCM and they had the conference in Cancun, uh, Mexico. So I said, okay, yeah, sure, I'll go, and went there and met all these ladies, 
And it was just really the first time that I stepped outside of our country and um, started meeting other women from other countries and listening to their stories. And it was just not anything that I'd ever thought about. I'm like, US, got everything I need right here. And I'll never forget um, one of the ladies, you know, just kind of grabbing me by the shoulder and saying, you don't understand, we need USA because, you know, our countries are smaller than some of your one states and you have access to all of these people in all of these states and our countries are so much smaller than that, um, that we need you. And everybody doesn't worry about going outside of their borders because you have everything you need right there, but we don't, we need you. And so I was just like, okay, <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, coming back and then passing the baton off, um, you know, you both have been to um, FCEM events, so you know it's not organized. It is kind of halfway organized chaos. Um, but just just being able to bring that story back and then having the support of NABO, understanding that we may not get a dividend on it on the front side, <clears throat> but our commitment to it is important and we don't need to lose that side. So that was probably the best. Um, and so I'm, I was just kind of proud of just myself for learning and then bringing that message back. And I think now we have a little bit more of an international focus. And I think NABO is going to continue to make an impact there. Um, I think some of my, my, I don't know, I guess my favorite part of it is um, the lifelong friends that I have acquired um, through my um, my membership in NABO, um, especially at the national board level. I mean, it is amazing, but I have, I have friends across the country that I can pick up the phone and say, hey, I need help, or hey, I need a connection here. Do you know anybody? Um, I even had to call Teresa one day and said, I think I have somebody following me. <laughs> I don't know what to do. And I think the next day in the mail, I had a can of pepper spray to put in my car. And it turned out I did have somebody following me. I wasn't imagining it. Um, but holy cow, I would have panicked, right? The first person I thought of was Teresa. She'll know what to do. And she did. I still have a picture of him, actually. The one that I sent you, I do. Um, so I think that's the best part is the relationships that I have made and not just in this country, but having the ability to meet women from all over the world. Um, you know, my trip, our trip to, to Russia, to Moscow and St. Petersburg is like a highlight of a lifetime that has been on my bucket list since I was in high school when I took Russian as a foreign language when I was in high school, I wanted to do that. And I got to do that because of Navo. Um, the, the, the trip that we made to Nicaragua to, with Opportunity International and the amazing people that we met there and, and I have such a better understanding. It's, it's changed my worldview of, um, of other countries and, and what they need. And they don't need money. They don't even want money in Nicaragua. They want the education so that they can do it themselves. They need the know-how and that's what we have and that's what we can provide for them. And I think that that is, that's, that's my favorite part. That's the best part. But then for me personally, it is, the um, understanding that I could, I can do stuff that I didn't have any idea that I could do because my peers in NABO could see something in myself that I couldn't see and they pushed me to grow. And it's awesome. It's just awesome. I'll be a member into the hereafter. I will still be a member of NABO. And I will take all of my lifelong friends with me. Not at the same time. 
connecting people to resources and to other people. So you will not be surprised that my favorite NABO memory is about the value of connections. To catch you up, I have ironically spent a lot of time after my NABO term as president in 2007, 2008, learning how to be a better leader. You see, I believe that the best thing that any of us can ever do is to add value to others. I became certified as a John Maxwell leadership coach a DISC and Five Behaviors Facilitator, joined Forbes Coaches Council, and then became a LinkedIn Advisory Cloud member. Through Rotary, I've also led as president, and I'm now a Zone Regional Coordinator for Public Image. I leveraged the international connections that I cultivated during my tenure at NABO and became North America's Regional Commissioner for FSOM, and then Global President of the International Alliance for Women. Through all of these experiences, I highly value connections and consequently, many of my dear friendships made in NABO. When Molly notified me of the video series she was creating with the past presidents of NABO, it was hard um, to not immediately relive one of my favorite moments as president. You know, there are a lot of happy valleys in NABO along with very scary mountains, every one of which can and should be attacked with zeal. By the way, I love the current messaging asking, what's your brave? You see, the valleys are ever so much more delightful when the mountains have been met with bravery and sure-footed leadership. For me, I struggled throughout my year to make 23 in-person chapter visits to some very unhappy chapters in the midst of governance changes that were fairly controversial. I left each of them with new friends empowered to grow their chapters with a new energy and a fresh excitement about NABO and all the possibilities. My team steered us away from our management firm and into a new staff structure and the current CEO president model. Jen had just joined the NABO team as a virtual assistant. What do you think? Did she get connected or what? I also met head on with the responsibility to show up and participate in international organizations like FSOM, AMHE, and TIAW. In fact, my first board retreat, again, not without controversy, was in Toronto. As my year closed out, I presided over the national conference in Phoenix, and then that moment. That moment when I opened the convention by addressing the president of AMHE, my new alliance partner, in Spanish. Pretty darn good Spanish, according to Ann Freeman. And then I realized it wasn't just Rosa Elena who came. It was other friends from Mexico, Australia, Iceland, Canada, and Peru. And we took a very exuberant picture after the opening session. It was a lovely happy valley that I traveled through as my term ended, culminating with a, a nominated committee comprised of friends I'd made across the US in those unhappy chapters. Together, we connected and delivered the next round of leaders for NAVO. Thank you all for the pleasure of your company your friendship, your support, and most of all, for your bravery. Peace, love, NABO. I just wanted to say happy 45th NABO. It's been an honor and a pleasure to be such part of such a great organization with such foundations in legacy roots and HR 5050 all the way to the evolving programs that we have now and the virtual events that we're currently experiencing. Um, I wanted to share a couple of the things that I um, enjoyed uh, on my um, NABO experiences. Um, some of the things that I've learned um, during my involvement is uh, I really got to appreciate how many businesses that I was able to meet, so many industries, um, industries that didn't even exist five years or five years ago to um, women who are carrying on with their family-owned businesses. So it's multi-generational. I've met businesses that are micro businesses, right? For you know, solopreneurs, all the way to um women who are multi, multi billionaires <laughs> And I've met people in all kinds of geographies. So we're talking about small little towns to large urban cities. I've, we've met chronologically 
businesses that are just starting. There was a business owner, I think she was 13 years old, and she sold flip-flops. That I still have that pair of leopard flip-flops. Um, all the way to, um, you know, who have been in business. I think one business owner told me that she had owned her business for 50 years old. I wanted to ask how old she was, but she, she was doing great. Um, and then local businesses who sell to, frankly, their city or their neighborhood to international businesses. And the thing that I learned during this time of meeting so many different businesses and women business owners, that for all the variables and for all of the differences that are in place, I learned that we have much more in common. And our commonality is one, we're all women who are juggling to run our business, to improve the size of our business, no matter how small or all, how big, you know, we are all working to, to grow our businesses. We're juggling. So in addition to our business, we're juggling our family obligations, our friends, um, our other commitments, and um, we're also supporting our communities. And so the commonality that I see in novel women are that they, we want to make things better for now, and we want to make things better for those who are going to come after us. So Nabo, I learned, is really about leadership. It's about leadership. In Nabo, that we always say that everybody's a leader. You're either a current Nabo leader, or you're a past Nabo leader, or you're a future Nabo leader in training. So um, it, it, leadership all the way. Um, and that was the serious part. So one of the fun things I wanted to share with you about Nabo is um, the skill sets that, that you learn. So, of course, we're always learning about, you know, really good technical skill sets and how to grow your business and manage and scale and HR and financial and all the nuts and bolts of running your business. But things that we don't talk about and some of my best memories are, this is where I learned how to drink bourbon. <laughs> when we had our, our leadership um, programs and a conference in Kentucky. And I, when I went there, I learned I had never actually tasted bourbon and whiskey before because I'm from California. And so after we picked up everybody off the floor because they were in such shock, they taught me how to drink bourbon. They started me out on Coke and bourbon, which is appalling right now that I think about it. But in a very short time, I learned how to drink it straight up on the rocks things that you learn at Nabo that they don't tell you. And let me tell you, I had a lot of great memories learning how to drink bourbon with not my Nabo sisters. Um, things that they don't put in the pamphlets. So anyway, with that, happy birthday, Nabo. I'm so proud to be part of an organization um, that has been so successful. I honor my sisters that created the foundation for us moving forward. And I honor the leadership and members that are going to take this organization far past I could what I could ever imagine. So thank you. Hello, Nabo Nation. Serving as your national president was indeed an honor and the highlight of my Nabo experiences. And trying to pick just one favorite memory from that year has been very, very difficult. But the one activity that always gave me the greatest pleasure and forever touched my heart was visiting the chapters and meeting hundreds upon hundreds of women business owners. The theme for my speech I gave during that year was imagine the possibilities because NABO is filled with possibilities. I use the history of the suffrage movement as the cornerstone of my presentation. And if you'll indulge me for just a moment, let me give you some highlights of how the Constitution's 19th Amendment was passed. After many years of a hard fought battle, one which included beatings and jail time for the suffragettes, Tennessee became the focus of the movement. Why? because we were the 36th state to vote on the amendment. And the amendment needed 36 eyes, 36 yeses to become law. The fate of the passage was in the hands of Harry T. Byrne, just 24 years old, the youngest member of the legislature. 
Feeling pressured by the legislative naysayers and many of his own constituents, Harry was going to vote no until he received a telegram from his mother on the morning when the vote was to be taken that afternoon. She asked him to vote yes. Thankfully, Harry listened to his mo mother and cast the tie-breaking vote 100 years ago. Yes, we celebrate 100 years of suffrage, August the 23rd, 1920. My heart was always filled with joy every time a member told me that that was the first time she had heard any details about the suffrage movement. So, my kindred sisters, as we celebrate 45 years of NABO excellence, let's also remember those men and women and a very brave young man from Tennessee who gave us the greatest freedom we have, the right to vote. From my home in Tennessee, I thank all of you for what you have done and will do for NABO and for women business owners. Cheers. Saludos. I am Lourdes Miranda joining you from my homeland, Puerto Rico, in celebrating the 45th anniversary of the National Association of Women Business Owners. Congratulations. It was my distinct privilege to serve as National President of NABO in 1982 to 1983 and to follow the footsteps of a group of committed enterprising women in Washington, D.C., who were determined to make women business owners visible and determined to leveling the playing field for all of us. I thank them. I know we're all grateful for what they have done. Flashes of those times come back to the haze of time, and I do remember that it was particularly difficult, and I think this will resonate with some of you, the competing demands. I was a divorced mother. I was divorced, the mother of a teenage daughter. My mother was not well in Puerto Rico. I had the business that had just passed uh, that key threshold of the five years, make or break, so I knew that I had to work hard to devote time to it. But somehow, it was stressful, it was busy, but it all got done. And I also have fond memories of a visit visit to uh, Wichita, Kansas, part of the country I, I didn't know, I had never visited. And meeting with this vibrant with group of women who were really so enthusiastic about setting up a chapter there. I hope that chapter is still ongoing. And now, to the present, a growing, a big, effective national organization, collective voice for women entrepreneurs. You've done a great job. Hundreds of women who have worked to get us here. I applaud you. So you can hear. I was on the Navo National Board for about six years, plus worked on a number of special projects for assorted national presidents. For two years, I was president of both Capital Area Navo and also National Public Affairs Chair, and I organized our first two National Public Affairs Days. When I was national president in 84-85, we affiliated with FCEM, the World Association of Women Entrepreneurs, and organized our first trade mission. The following year, I organized NABO's participation in the 1986 White House Conference on Small Business. With only 2,500 members of NABO in 25 states, we elected 12% of the delegates. That was 100 times more than the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and 200 times more than the National Federation of Independent Business. Plus, we had 15 of the state chairs and we got all but one of our policies 
policy issues adopted. I also developed the policy issues for the 1995 White House Conference on Small Business. That was a wonderful process, the whole White House Conference. I was also part of the team on HR 5050, which became the Women's Business Ownership Act of 1988, signed by President Reagan that year. In the late 1980s, I wrote our vision for the year 2000, that many of our members would become major leaders in business, advocacy, policy making, and elective office, and that there would be a woman president of the United States by the year 2000. Boy, did we ever misfire on that one. But champagne corks popped around the country when Marlene Johnson was elected Lieutenant Governor of Minnesota in 1983. NABO was at the cutting edge of change in those days, creating the world for women that we wanted to see. Our motto was training women leaders for a world of change. And we worked extremely hard to make sure that both political parties in the United States fully supported women's entrepreneurship. Now, despite deep partisan divisions and the COVID crisis, NABO has to continue creating the world that we want to see for our businesses, our communities, our families, and our country. One of our greatest strengths is our sisterhood with NABO members from around the entire country whom we love. These deep, deep national friendships give us an understanding that transcends red and blue, coastal and heartland. So ever onward and ever upward, NABO. The world ain't seen nothing yet. Thank you. Very exciting and fast paced uh, year of presidency because uh, President Clinton was president then, and we had contacts uh, into the White House that were um, very meaningful for us. And we, um, I myself met the president on a number of occasions, um, most of the cabinet members, certainly the SBA, Erskine Bowles. So politically, it was a very um, amazing year. Financially, we were struggling. And uh, we probably heard that from other years, so that was a challenge. Uh, the women on the board were fantastic. Um, and even as I think back on my NABO experiences, I always think of the connections. It's the personal connections, uh, many of whom I am still in contact with from 20 and 25 years ago. I remember that we had a, um, an award ceremony and the uh, person who won owned a cookware store uh, cookware, uh, she was a manufacturer of cookware in, um, I believe it was Houston, Texas. In any case, when she arrived, her luggage did not arrive. And, uh, and she came in the afternoon of the event. And that evening, she took me aside and told me how amazing the Nabo women were. She had told one woman that she didn't have any luggage or an appropriate dress. And the next thing she knew, she had a Nabo member's dress. She had shoes. She said it was amazing. She had whatever she put into her hair, but they dressed her for the event. So when she went up on stage, um, she was glorious. And I thought that was, I've always remembered that story uh, from her. I also know that we had a great international link with the FCE, FCEM women. And I myself traveled to Spain for one of the meetings. I visited uh, over 30 chapters the year that I was president, ran up a lot of those United Airline <laughs> mileage miles. Um, there was everything that was right. And I've taken NABO into the rest of my life as well. Uh, I became a planning commissioner for my town. And as I sat at the dais, I couldn't help but realize what a good meeting I was chairing. And I attribute that to NABO because there was that leadership training that always happened. Um, I remember uh, the, the uh, 
uh, conference on small business, the White House conference on small business, and the novel women being the ones that were tech savvy, uh, Virginia Littlejohn helping develop the program, you know, Vision 2020. I still have that booklet uh, that we put out. And we predicted what would be happening with tech, and it has. So, so those are many of my memories. I could go on and on and on. I'm not sure how long you wanted, but um, it was just, it's the people, it's the mission. Uh, I think of the, the business owners now, and uh, my, my heart just goes out to everyone who's trying to keep a business together now uh, during the pandemic and the other challenges we have in this country. And I tell people, you know, we just have to replace this fear with faith, uh, faith that we can do it. And as women, we know we can do it. So that's it, Molly, for me.